Good morning, church. How are you guys doing? I pray that you guys are doing really fine, being healthy. I have a good news that from next week, the church is going to reopen. That means we will come together, come to church together, and worship in the same place. It has been almost more than two months since we never met at the church. So from tomorrow, uh, from next week, we are going to meet at the church. Praise God. And we have another good news. That is, one of our friends and two of our friends, Punima and Violet, is going to be baptized next week. I invite you, everyone to come to church and celebrate the best day for two of our friends. And please pray for them, pray for Violet and Punima that uh, they be baptized next week. Okay. Uh, before we open our scripture, let us bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you give us life and you have protected us for all our lives, especially for two months within this uh, situation in, on this earth. We pray that the virus will not affect us anymore and the virus will be gone soon from the earth please give your wisdom to the uh, doctors and to the scientists who are uh, struggling to invent vaccine for invent invent the vaccine for the virus now we are about to open your scripture please send your holy spirit and transform us through the scripture, through the word of God. Please guide our lives, lead our lives to, uh, to be uh, likeness of your, uh, resemble you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, today I want to continue the story of uh, John the Baptist. Last week we talked about uh, John the Baptist based on the book of Luke chapter 3. I want to continue. So the title for today is uh, John uh, the, the cry out from the John the Baptist. Okay. Uh, so last week we talked about uh, what John preached. He preached uh, that bear fruit worthy of repentance and people came to John and asking and before that John uh, spoke a fearful uh, sen a fearful sentence that uh, the axe is laid to the root of trees if any tree bear no, bear no good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. That's yeah, a fiery uh, statement. And then people came to John and asking, what shall we do? What should we do? And John is saying, if you have two cloth, share it. If you enough food, more than enough food, share it. And for the tax collectors, collect no more than what is appointed and for the soldiers do not use your force to oppress others and be content with your weight be content what you are paying for right now that was the John's message to the people so it or connect connect each other Bear, bearing food is uh, sharing looking for others simply love our neighbor 
as ourselves. That's the John's message. So when someone uh, rep uh, repent truthfully, sincerely, he gonna or she gonna bear fruit that is love our neighbor, love his neighbor or her neighbor as herself or himself. That's the fruit. That's a good fruit. That's the fruit we should bear. So that that was that. That was the, it was the John's message, and I want to uh, look for what Jesus' message. So John was the uh, person who prepared way, prepared the way for Jesus Christ, right? Uh, so John did his mission, and then Jesus came. So chapter four is about Jesus, the story of Jesus. He begins his ministry. So before he begins his ministry, he was baptized and he was tempted by Satan. And then he started his ministry. So uh, the book of Luke chapter 4 and 14 tells that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And news of him went out through all the surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified his by all so he started his ministry and then a few, a few days later he came back to uh, the town he was grown up was Nazareth so I want to read uh, from the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 16 to 19 verse 16 to 19 so Jesus uh, he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and, and as he, his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord. That was the scripture that Jesus read when he was handed uh, the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. So, the verse 18 and 19 is come from the book of Isaiah chapter 61. So actually it's, it's not two verses, but it's longer verses. Six, uh, chapter 61 has longer verses there. I believe Jesus read more than two verses. So Jesus stood up and he read it and then he came back to his seat where he was sitting and people were keep watching him, keep looking at him. Because the way he read, the moment he read was uh, different from others. I believe that he had like light on his back. The, his voice was like a thunder. Like when, G, when God speaks, it was like thunder. So when Jesus was reading the scripture, his voice was like thunder. So people were astonished and they were kept looking at Jesus. And when people were looking at him, Jesus pronounced or proclaimed that, hey, you guys know in verse 21, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So Jesus proclaim that this the message that I read is accomplished is fulfilled through me so Jewish people uh, thought things things that the book of Isaiah chapter 56 is about Messiah the message of Messiah and Jesus was himself saying that he is the Messiah and people were astonished, marveled, and they got mad. Because the person 
who is saying himself is Messiah is a kid, a kid they have known for 30 years. They grow up together, they grew together, they ate together, they slept together, they played together. They have known him for 30 years. And he is saying that he is the Messiah. For them, for them it, doesn't make, it didn't make sense. So they got mad. They got mad. Uh, so come back to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 61. So Jesus proclaimed that I, I came to give message, good news to the poor. And I came to heal the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to captives, liberty for the slaves, and liberty for the ones who are oppressed right now. That was Jesus' message. And verse 19 says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So here's the question. What is the acceptable year of the Lord? When the audience in the Jesus' time, when the audience heard or read or heard the verse 19, the acceptable of the uh, year of the Lord, what were they thinking? It is obvious, obvious, and many scholars, many uh, theologians or pastors agree that the the acceptable year of the Lord is the jubilee, the year of year of jubilee. So. Uh, the year of Jubilee is written in the book of Leviticus, chapter 27. So when the Israelites was in desert, God gave several laws to Moses. And one of them was the year of Jubilee, and year of uh, the sabbatical, Sabbath of the seventh year, sabbatical year. So in the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, uh, it talks about, uh, it is said, Lord spoke to Moses on the Mount of Sinai saying, Hey, Moses, go to people and say that keep these things. But from that now, but when you enter the land that I will give you, which, which was Canaan, when you enter the land of Canaan, you start keeping these laws. And this were the sabbatical year and the year of Jubilee. And what is about the year of Jubilee? Actually, Jesus already mentioned in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18. It's about message to the poor and uh, free for the slaves, uh, free for the oppressed ones. So uh, when we uh, talk about the year of Jubilee, we have, we have to talk about the sabbatical year. So sabbatical years, year was like this. For six years, you work hard. You plant seed and you uh, plow the land. You harvest the food. But on the seventh year, on the seventh year, you take a rest. Do not plant, do not plow, do not harvest, do nothing. Let the land rest. That was the sabbatical year. And then uh, after Jesus talked about the sabbatical year, he started talking about the year of Jubilee. So the year of Jubilee is like seven times seven. So you keep sabbatical year uh, uh, seven, uh, like, the cycle of seven years and then uh, you when when you keep the sabbatical year and then when the when you keep sabbatical year seven times which is 49 years on the fifth year that year that year is the year of Jubilee it is biggest uh, year biggest year 
So what then what happened in the Jubilee? I mentioned already in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18 Jesus already pronounced it and proclaimed it that was you take a rest let the land last but not only that you have to set your slaves free and not only that if you lend your money to your neighbors or your brothers or your friends you uh, release the debt so all the debt you owe or you lend will be gone will be disappear so everything will be reset say that uh, you work hard but you fail that's the life many people work hard but sometimes you fail and then you have no money to uh, take care of your family what what could you do you you have to work for others so you go to your friend or people and then you ask for uh, give job or become slaves and then they'll pay you and then you can take a charge so that's the way they became slaves so when you became slave and when you, if you you work hard and then on the, the year of jubilee you will be set free you will be reset you so they, you say that you sold your land but on the year of jubilee you, you uh, gain regain the land and the, uh, the land you first when you were first time uh, had because when Israelites enter the land of Canaan, uh, the, the next leader was Joshua. Just Joshua, he uh, divided all the land evenly to every people, every person. So everyone has their own land. They start their working with same position. So in the era of Jubilee, uh, you regain the land you gained in the first place that was the year of jubilee so within this system there will be no poor people there will be no one will be uh, poor every all their lives or will be oppressed so the year of jubilee is all about them so when me when we uh, when we make the year of jubilee compact is the is it is the book of isaiah chapter 61 so i'm going to read it it is the spirit of it is to preach the gospel to the poor to his, uh, and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. That was the kind of uh, pivotal message of the year of Jubilee. There, there, um, more than that, but it's, it takes long time to, to look at it. So that's the what Jesus preached. You know what? I came down. To earth there's a bigger plan bigger mission for me but I have uh, this mission to preach about this to do this I came to uh, take care of poor give good message what is good message message for poor have you guys ever been poor really poor like like you don't have food to eat for today then for that people what is a good method it's the food it's the food and then that's the good method for the poor so then what what the John the Baptist preached when people came to 
John the Baptist asked him. What was the answer from the John the Baptist? He says, "If you have two food or two clothes, you share it with the people who doesn't have. Who doesn't have? So if the people share their food for the poor, it's a good message for the poor." Good message for the poor. And about captives, Jesus says, "Proclaim liberty to the captives, to the slaves." How, how does the how did there's no slave? There's another concept of slave in these days, but literally slaves there is none. So, how did slaves uh, happen, occur? Because of wealth, because of money. If they have no money, or if they lost the war from, they became slave. Then how can that them be uh, uh, free? If someone comes to him and buy it, and then if the master set free, the slave will be set free. That's the Jesus message. That's Jesus. Why Jesus came down to earth. And when we look at the message of John, John said, "Do not uh, for the tax collectors, do not uh, collect money what you are appointed. Be satisfied, and to the soldiers, be satisfied with what you are paid right now." Do not get greedy. Be satisfied what you have right now, and if you have enough, you share it with others. Share it with others. So, John's message and Jesus' message—they match each other. They're talking about the same thing. Talking about the same thing. So, in this say. Uh, we are not Christians. Are not keeping the year of jubilee or sabbatical year because we believe that it is abolished. Abolished. Although the law is abolished, the concept, the spread of the year of jubilee still stays. What is the spread of the year of jubilee? It is. Love your neighbor as yourself. Take care of your friends. Take care of your brothers, or your neighbor, and neighbors. That's the center of message from the year of jubilee. And when John came, he preached this. He preached it. And not only John, but the, but Jesus Christ Himself also preached about it. If you read the four Gospels, Jesus is keep repeating. Keep repeating, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, everyone knows that. Everyone knows that uh, the greatest commandment, the first greatest commandment, is love your God all your heart. And the second, the second greatest is love your neighbor as yourself. That's the message. And in the book of Matthew, chapter five to seven, it's the greatest message ever preached in the history and will be. Is the mount uh, is the preaching on the mountain by Jesus. And when you read the book of Matthew, chapter five to seven, most of his message is about love your neighbor as yourself, even love your enemy. Love your enemy. That's the Jesus message. So let's come back to.、Uh, John's message. So John was preaching. 
repent and bear fruit. What was the, what was the fruit? What was the good fruit? It is love your neighbor as yourself. So those who repent truthfully, those who meet Jesus, those who find Jesus and find the love of God, he will repent. And that repent will lead to the life that like the life that we love your neighbor our neighbor as ourselves that is what John is preaching and it is the truth that if we love our God if we love God or our heart or our mind we will it will lead us to love our neighbor as ourselves because Jesus is keep saying hey guys hey guys love your neighbor even love your enemies that is what is Jesus saying and you're gonna listen to the message from the the person who love with all your heart aren't you gonna listen to the message from God from Jesus Jesus is saying love your neighbor as yourself and practically is giving us that instruction if you have enough food share it share it so in the book of Leviticus chapter 25 when, uh, when God was talking about the sabbatical year, He knew what we were thinking. He knew what we were thinking. In the, the book of Leviticus chapter 25 verse 20, it says, and if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow nor gather in our produce, then God will command, God will command His blessing on you in the sixth year, and it will bring forth produce enough for three years. For three years. So He is saying, you guys definitely say, Lord, if we stop harvesting on the seventh year, what are we going to eat on the seventh year? The whole year, it's a, it is 365 days. What are we going to eat? That was their question. And God is giving clear answer. Hey, do not worry. On the sixth year, I'll give you more than enough food not only for the seventh year but for three years i will bless you if you keep my commandment i will bless you that is what he is saying and in the month of um, preaching in matthew chapter 6 jesus said do not worry do not think that what you are going to eat, what you are going to drink, what you are going to wear. Look at the flower, flowers in the field. Look at the lily. They, look at the birds. They never worry about what to eat, what to wear. But God, I myself give them what to eat, what to wear. And you guys are much precious much more precious than willies and animals or birds do not worry but you only look for the righteousness look for me i will provide you that's god's promise god's promise i pray that we listen we all listen to the message of john the baptist try to bear good fruit by repentance and try
trust on God that He will bless you. He will bless you. When you, when we share our food with others, He will definitely give you more, give us more. Let us believe on that. Trust on Him. Trust on Him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you and you love us. You love all the people on the earth. You want to bless us, and you have you have given us the way that we can be blessed. We can be happy. We have given us. Please lead our lives. To listen to the, your word and lead us a life to transform into your likeness by listening to, by uh, by obeying your law. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Again, we were going to meet at the church next week. I can't wait to seeing you guys in person. And next week we're gonna have the blast day. Two of our friends will be baptized. Will be baptized. So come and join us. <laughs>